It was close to midnight. Lois and I had just taken in a movie and were walking home along Park Drive, passing the Metropolis Museum of Art, when the cry for help came. Help! Help! Please! Help! Up there, Clark, on the museum steps. Yeah, I see him. Help! Help! Please! It's one of the museum guards. He's wounded. <laughs> it's inside the Hall of Gems, Star of Bangalore. All of it. He passed out. Lois, you get on the phone. Ambulance and police. I'll check this out. The Hall of Gems was on the third floor. I made it in double time and came in on a shambles. Broken glass, exhibit cases smashed, another guard slightly wounded and leaning over a man in a stocking mask. You get it bad? Just a scratch. I'll be all right. Is this one of them? Yeah, they all wore masks like this. Let me get it off. Well, what do you know? Little Teddy Bunce. You know him? Small-time jewel thief. This is a big job for him. Can't. Hello, Teddy. Can't listen. Who was in on it with you, Teddy? Listen. <coughs> the ice. The ice. He dead? Yes. What did he mean, the ice? It's an underworld term for jewels, and by the looks of it, they got away with plenty. By early morning, most of the preliminary police work had been finished. Photographs, dusting for prints, coroner's report. Detective Lieutenant Joe Harsky had been assigned to the case. Joe, you got a minute? Sure. How are the guards? One died this morning, the other will be okay. What's the story on the jewels? Quite a haul, over two million worth, counting the Star of Bangalore. Enough ice to cool a small tropical island. The Star of Bangalore. Some kind of sapphire, if I remember right. One of the world's largest. All part of the Newton collection. That's Owen Newton over there, isn't it? None other. The playboy of the Western world in a very nasty number. See you, kids. Hmm. Come on, Lois. Let's have a little talk with Mr. Newton. Owen Newton? Who'd want to know? Clark Kent. This is Lois Lane. Press? The Daily Planet. I'm not impressed. What does impress you, Mr. Newton? Certainly not the superb security of the Metropolis Museum. The collection was on loan, and see what happened? They must hire basket cases for guards. One of those guards is dead, Newton. Protecting your gems. If he'd been a better man, to be alive, and the collection would still be here. Lois, let's get some fresh air. Good idea. <laughs> More coffee? Thanks. You want your eggs fried? Sunny side, if the waitress ever comes. Owen Newton. Likeable sort. When he's asleep. What do you know about him? Scion of a wealthy family. Just came into the fortune a couple of years ago. Playboy type. Very irresponsible. Gambles a lot. Invests heavily in shows, films. Most of them losers. Then he may have gone through all the money. That's the rumor. In which case, the insurance covering the Newton collection would be a welcome windfall. You don't think he stole his own jewels, do you? It's been done before, Lois. And in this case, there'd be a double charge. Larceny and murder. Some checking up led to a number of facts. One, the Newton collection had been heavily insured. And when I talked to Joe Harsky again at police headquarters... Newton's up to his neck in debt, Clark. How so? Gambling, mostly. He owes the syndicate, and those boys don't like to be owed very long. He's also put a lot of money into flop shows, I hear. Most of them, but not the one in town now, Isorama, I think it's called. That one's supposed to be pretty good. Nothing's turned up on the Star of Bangalore or the other stones, I guess. Not a sign. We've checked every fence here and across the country, courtesy of the FBI. But then we didn't expect anything. Why not? That ice is too hot, especially the Star of Bangalore. It's known all over the world. To cut that stuff down, whoever has it would have to get it out of the country. To Amsterdam. Probably, and that wouldn't be easy. No doubt. Well, thanks, Joe. You've been helpful. Glad to be of service. Uh, that show Newton's producing, what's the name of it? Isorama. I think I'll take it in. The Isorama was being presented at the Metropolis Coliseum. Lois and I got a couple of press passes and were pleasantly surprised after we sat down. It was a big extravaganza on ice, featuring the best ice skating dancers and acrobats in show business, and a variety of musical numbers. The production was top flight, the music tuneful, the girls beautiful, and the colorful costumes glittered and sparkled under the spotlights. I've never seen such skating. Well, you haven't seen me yet. 
I'll bet. Maybe this show will bail Newton out. Maybe. The costumes are stunning, aren't they? Uh-huh. Look at that. It's called a full axle. How do you know so much? <laughs> You'll have to show me sometime. I'd like to see you do that one. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. As we were filing out of the Coliseum, we passed Owen Newton standing near one of the office doors. Very impressive, Mr. Newton. Huh? Oh, it's you again. Good show. No doubt we'll get a pan from the Daily Planet. Not if I can help it. Doesn't matter anyway. We're taking it out. Oh? Why? Going on a tour of Europe. When? Leaving tomorrow. The next day at the Planet, I couldn't get my mind off Owen Newton. His show, his leaving for Europe, the Newton collection of jewels, the star of Bangalore. It was like a jigsaw puzzle. The pieces scattered and one missing. Are you here or out to lunch? Huh? Oh, sorry, Lois. I've seen some daydreaming, but never like this. I'm doing a jigsaw puzzle. That's nice. Where are the pieces? In my head. Well, if you put them all down on the table, maybe I can help. Lois, remember Teddy Bunce, what he said? Teddy who? Teddy Bunce, the jewel thief who died at the museum. His last words. The ice. Right, the ice. What did he mean? Well, the jewels, the Newton collection, the star of Bangalore, the ice. Not exactly. I don't follow. Those costumes were stunning, you said. What costumes? At the show last night. Now I'm really lost. Excuse me. Where are you going? Where the ice man goeth, I goeth. See you later. I did the quick change act to Superman in a phone booth. A little checking at the airport and then called Joe Harsky. Lieutenant Harsky. Superman here. Superman. Suppose we meet at Metropolis International, Flight 509, Intercontinental Airlines. Why? The star of Bangalore and the entire Newton collection is on board. I'm on my way right now. It was only a few seconds to the airport, but still I was late. Newton's flight was starting down the runway when I arrived. Figuring it would be easier to keep the plane on the ground than order it back in midair, I zoomed down to the big jet's nose, reversed my direction, and flying backwards in front of the flight deck, waved my arms in a stop signal. The pilot looked at me goggle-eyed and then ordered reverse thrust. What's going on here? Take her back to the gate, Captain. Why? You're overloaded with ice. Back at the gate, Lieutenant Harsky was waiting for me with a very angry group of passengers. Not the least of them, Owen Newton. I demand to know what's going on here. I demand it! Take it easy, Newton. I'll have your badge for this, Lieutenant. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, Superman, where's the ice? Have you got the ice around my wardrobe trunks out of the cargo hatch? Over here. Well? Just a second. What are you doing? X-ray eyes, Lieutenant. Just want to make sure it's the right trunk. Yes, open that one. Wait a minute, you can't do it. Easy, I... Newton, we've got a warrant. Open it, Kelly. Okay, Superman, now what? Look at this, Lieutenant. A very colorful costume, right? So, it's a dress with a lot of sequins and paste jewelry on it. Not so fast. This particular stone, this sapphire, isn't paste. It's real, Lieutenant. The original star of Bangalore. You sure? My x-ray eyes. And these sequins aren't sequins, they're diamonds. You'll find the rest of the Newton collection sewn into the other costumes. <laughs> what do you know about that? So, when little Teddy Bunt said the ice... He was trying to say the Icerama. Newton's plan for getting the jewels to Amsterdam. Yeah.